Welcome to the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services at the University of Connecticut Health Center. This video focuses on the process of fertilization and early embryo development through in vitro fertilization. At the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services, our sole focus is in providing the highest standard of individualized clinical care to people experiencing infertility in an environment that is caring, sensitive, responsive, and knowledgeable. We understand the emotional and healthcare needs of infertile couples, and we focus on what they want most, a baby. We have expertise in the latest technologies and treatments in infertility. We also offer the compassion and support services that will help couples cope with the special emotional needs in dealing with fertility problems. Our highly trained, compassionate staff will help each step of the way. And we'll start by giving couples the hope, support, and medical care they need to conceive. This video is one small part of an ongoing educational series that we hope will help to educate and inform you about the IVF process. There are two ways in which the eggs may be fertilized. Standard insemination involves placing the eggs and sperm together in a petri dish. Intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI, is when a single sperm is injected into an egg. ICSI is often used in cases of male factor infertility and in unexplained infertility. Your doctor will make recommendations for the fertilization procedure that is most appropriate for you based on your history and test results. This slide shows a video clip of the ICSI procedure. The panel on the left shows a single sperm under the microscope being picked up by a glass tube called a pipette. The panel on the left shows that sperm being injected into the egg. With standard insemination, the sperm must swim to the egg, attach to the egg's shell, and then penetrate the shell to get inside. With ICSI, these steps are bypassed. Here we show pictures of a mature egg and sperm and of embryos during the developmental process. Eggs are exposed to sperm on the day of the egg retrieval. The day after the egg retrieval, the eggs are checked for evidence of fertilization. As you can see, the development of the embryo is rapid and changes occur every day. By the third day of embryo development, embryos often have six to eight cells. Embryos are often transferred back into the uterus on day three of development. In the picture on the left lower side of the slide, an eight cell embryo is shown. Each circle represents a cell, and the shell can also be seen surrounding the embryo. By day five of embryo development, the embryo is now at the blastocyst stage. As you can see, significant growth has occurred and the embryo is more developed and has many more cells than it did on day three. Embryos are sometimes transferred on day five of development at the blastocyst stage. The more developed an embryo is, the more likely it is to implant. Therefore, if a blastocyst transfer is performed, fewer embryos are transferred. The pregnancy rates are excellent and the multiple pregnancy rate may be reduced in this way, especially if a single blastocyst is transferred. Your physician will make recommendations regarding the ideal day of transfer for you and the number of embryos to transfer based on your age and history. The last picture at the bottom right of the slide shows a blastocyst hatching out of its shell. This is what occurs naturally as the blastocyst prepares itself to implant into the lining of the uterus. The shell covering the embryo is called the zona pellucida. If that shell is thick, it may be more difficult for the embryo to hatch out of the shell. The embryo must be able to get out of the shell in order for implantation to occur. Assisted hatching is an optional procedure that may be performed if the shell of the embryo looks thick. It involves making a small opening in the shell under the microscope. If the shell looks thick, Assisted hatching is recommended by the embryologist in the IVF lab. There are other reasons why assisted hatching may be recommended, which are shown here. Your physician will discuss this with you and make recommendations regarding whether it should be performed. This slide shows a video of the assisted hatching procedure. Here we show an embryo under the microscope. On the right lower corner of the screen is a very small instrument called a pipette. It's used to create a small opening in the shell. Once that opening is made, extra fragments of cells and debris that should not be present may be removed from the embryo as well. In order to achieve a successful pregnancy with IVF, there are some steps that are critical to the process. 
These are having a good response to the ovulation induction medication, successful fertilization, healthy embryos for transfer, a positive pregnancy test, appropriately increasing levels of pregnancy hormone, and confirmation of pregnancy in the uterus with a fetal heartbeat on ultrasound. At the center, we hope that each and every one of our patients has success, and we do our very best to achieve that goal. The Center for Advanced Reproductive Services is dedicated to advanced infertility treatment through the combined application of high-quality patient care, clinical education, and research. At the Center, we strive for excellence in patient satisfaction and clinical outcomes in a responsibly managed environment. Learn more about us at UConnFertility.com or call us at 860-679-4580.